there is a perception um, that mathematics is some sort of sorcery. You're taught this, uh, this whole book of magic spells, you know, that, that if you want to solve a quadratic equation, you invoke the quadratic formula and, uh, you know, you write some arcane symbols and you, you, you solve the equation. But often you're taught um, to apply these rules without really understanding why they work. Um, and as a consequence, maybe you're afraid to deviate, you know, if you, if you, if you do anything which just doesn't follow the recipe, maybe it'll be a disaster. Mathematics gives you a way of solving problems. Uh, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of systematically taking a complicated problem, breaking it up into simpler pieces, working on each piece separately, and then putting them back together again, which is most effective for very abstract quantitative problems, but it's also a useful skill in, in, in the real world. Are there people who are naturally good at math and are, are there some people who are hopelessly bad at math? Um, I don't think so. I think everyone has an innate mathematical talent. Um, you can see it in children. They, they ask questions about numbers and shapes. There's a result in mathematics that all children or many children discover by themselves. In fact, and in fact, they teach other children this one fact. And it's, it's the fact that there's no largest number. And the way children realize this is at school, they sometimes play this game, you know, who can name the larger number? You know, so they say, oh, one million, and then the other child says one billion. But eventually, they figure out that no matter what enormous number the other child names, they can just say plus one. Okay, that whatever you said, plus one, and that's a bigger number. And once they realize that, they realize that there's there actually no, no biggest number. And in doing so, they have actually discovered a very important technique in mathematics. It's called proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction is when a proof is established by showing that if the opposite were true, it would lead to an impossibility or contradiction. If you want to show that something can't happen, for example, that there's no largest number, you assume that there is a largest number, and then you, you show that uh, that leads to a contradiction. That if someone says, ah, oh, the largest number is so-and-so, you just say plus one. Okay, it is not the largest number. That is an example of a mathematical technique, which is often very challenging for, uh, um, for even undergraduate students um, to grasp when they're taught it formally. But children in schoolyards can actually pick up this, 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 uh, this concept just by playing a game. Everyone has an inbuilt um, mathematical intuition. It's, it's obvious to everyone, you know, if you have a pizza and you share it among four people, uh, you, uh, everyone gets a smaller piece than if you sh shared it among three people. That's a very basic mathematical fact, and it's something that, that we all understand. The main reason why um, people think that they are bad at math or they don't have um, the math gene, whatever, is that mathematics is often taught in a very prescriptive manner, and it is, um, it's not natural um, to think this way. Often we have to learn all these drills and rules, and it's not tied much to our intuition. Um, there are different ways in which people can access mathematics. Some people are very visual. Um, some people are very logical. Uh, some people are very systematic. And they are all valid ways of, of approaching mathematics. One of the first steps when you take a reward problem and try to turn it into a mathematical problem is it's called abstraction. Abstraction is the process of taking away all the reward elements of a problem and stripping it down to its basic mathematical form. You can then solve it using algebra or arithmetic or whatever other type of mathematics you wish. You learn, you learn this in school, actually. You're given these word problems. You have so and so many dollars and, and you need to get from A to B in a certain amount of time uh, and you need to plan your route or whatever. And so you, you identify what aspects of the problem are important. If you're planning how to get from A to B um, in the right way, you know, maybe things like the speed of your vehicle, um, what stops you take, these are important variables. But other things like, you know, what color is the car that you're driving there, that's not important. Um, so you, you, you have to identify what features of the problem are essential, which ones are not, um, and then try to translate um, all the data that you're given uh, into mathematical language. Sometimes these are equations. Um, Sometimes these are geometric relations. And then once you strip away the, uh, the original um, context of the problem and you just have this, this abstract mathematical model, then you can start applying your mathematical tools, your algebra, um, geometry, whatever. People sometimes think of mathematics um, as a language, and uh, I certainly do. All children naturally pick up languages, but Imagine if um, English was taught 
uh, when you, in your English classes, you, you, uh, you didn't speak, you didn't hear the words, you just practiced how to diagram sentences, how to distinguish nouns from adjectives, and you just did all this theory, which is an important part of English. But if that's all you learned, um, you might think, oh, I'm bad at English because I don't know how to, uh, what a preposition is or whatever. So it's a little unfortunate maybe that our school education maybe overemphasizes rigor in mathematics, even though it is important. The purpose of, of mathematics really is to, is, uh, is to communicate ideas in, in, and concepts in a very precise way and to, 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 to strip out the essence of what is the real problem uh, at hand. You may be studying a specific problem that relates to um, some physical objects or, or some economic data or whatever, but in mathematics, we'll just say, okay, this object we're gonna call X, this one we're gonna call Y, and, and these are the relationships between X and Y. Uh, we're really stripping um, the problem down to its bare essentials. And when you first see that, it looks very abstract and uh, weird. But by removing all the inessential components of a problem, you can focus on, on what's really going on and it can help you see uh, the way forward. So it's a very clear language for solving uh, quantitative problems. Pretty much every aspect of modern technology has mathematics going on under the hood. If you want to send your credit card information securely over the internet, it is encrypted by mathematics. If you want to have multiple cell phones working in the same room without interfering with each other, we take it for granted that that actually happens, but it happens because there are mathematical algorithms that separate um, the signals from each other. If you have a mathematical mindset, you know, you, you, you can gain some confidence that um, something you don't understand, you know, like how a cell phone works or how a computer works or how the internet works or how an economy works, it gives, you, it gives you enough tools that you can feel like if you really had to, you could actually understand from first principles how, um, how these things actually work. And the world somehow becomes a less scary place. You don't have to resort to uh, you know, conspiracy theories or, or you think that everything that you don't understand is magic. Um, it, yeah, the world becomes a more rational place, um, which I find very comforting. So what have we learned? Okay, so firstly, the purpose of mathematics ultimately is to communicate ideas and concepts with precision. Secondly, even in your day-to-day -day life, stripping down a problem to its bare essentials can provide clarity and insight that you wouldn't have had before.